So in this video, we're gonna have a look at the estimate costing screen and a bit of an intro to it. We'll have a look at categories and how the statuses can be used as a bit of a checklist. We'll look at searching for price items and how to get those in there. And we'll cover off how to uh, export your bill of quantities from here as well. So we are in the estimate costing screen here, and we're gonna start with just a couple of, uh, I guess, basic intro points to it. First of all, the category layout that we've got here may look a little bit different depending on the template that you've used. Uh, so the one we've used in this example is our build exact single story template. But obviously if you're using your own um, or you've used a different template, the categories will look a little different. That said, the template that you use or how you start your estimate is really just that, it's a starting point. Uh, so once it's in here, you can do things like adding new categories via this button. You can delete categories that we've got using the red recycle bins. You can use these dots on the left-hand side to grab and drag categories. And when it goes green, you just let it go and it'll take up its new spot. You can also copy categories, which can be particularly useful if you do, uh, let's say double unit sites or townhouses. Uh, you can copy things like frame to get frame unit one and frame unit two. And these uh, copy and delete and moving options are exactly the same when you get inside a category. So I've clicked just on the gray bar to open it up. Um, you'll notice we've got the same copy buttons, delete buttons, same plus to add new lines in and same dots on the left hand side to move stuff around. Next thing we'll look at is for each category, we're gonna have this idea of a status, which is this little flag here. And if I put my mouse on it, it'll say it's incomplete. As I'm going through, I will be going complete or not required when I'm done with a category or leaving it as not completed if I'm obviously not complete with it yet. But the whole idea here is that these little statuses allow you to remember where you're up to more easily. Uh, and when you uh, have finished an estimate, there basically will be no more of these incomplete flags. If someone else is working on the estimate or checking over your work, um, this is a great way for them to know where you're up to. So complete will be used when it's it's done. That's an obvious one. Not required basically removes a whole category. And if there was a do dollar value for it, um, that would disappear as well. There are many times when hitting not required is better than deleting. Um, so a really common example is that you might issue a quote and it might have an allowance for, let's say, landscaping in it. The client comes back saying, hey, I want to slim some money off this and take the landscaping off for us. Not required is much better because if they change their mind again and again, uh, deleting it is very permanent and hitting not required is very reversible. You can bring it back in pretty easy. Now, the next thing to cover off on is just searching for items. So I'm gonna go into preliminaries for this one. You'll notice I, you may have heard, I double click um, on these boxes to get them into what I call edit mode. If I hit save, it'll go out of edit mode and I can get back to it also by using this little edit pen over here. But um, I'm a little impatient with software so I generally just double click and it does the exact same thing. So when I wanna get prices in here, there's really two ways I can do it. It is 100% fine to just go building permit, one costs me $600, obviously pulling numbers from, from nowhere here, but um, one costs me $600, change the material type just so that is correct. And yep, completely fine just to type in stuff if I know it off the top of my head. On the other hand, if I want to search for things, as I am typing, what it will do is search through all of the catalogs area uh, to find prices that might be relevant. Now, there is an entire other video on how to get prices into your catalogs area and, um, and how that all works. But in short, the more prices you have in here, the more that will show when you are estimating. If you wanna grab one, you just click on it and in it goes. You'll also get this little, little uh, tag here or a little box here which you can click on and it tells you more about the price list, where it came from, when it was updated last, all of that kind of stuff. 
Beautiful. If you're having a hard time searching with this box, uh, so let's just say, let's just say I search for MGP10. So there's going to be heaps of results for MGP10 uh, as the strength rating on the timber. This box is only ever going to show 10 things. So if you, it's really good if you know what you're looking for and you can be more direct by going MGP10 space 90 space 45. That'll drill it down to just search for those three things together. If you're still having a hard time finding stuff, I really recommend this browse button. And this allows you to be much more specific in what you're looking for. So it's now showing only the lists that have this result, but you could go into it, delete this search term up here, and literally just browse all of your price lists and browse them all by category. So this, I think, is a better way if you're just having a poke around trying to find um, what prices are on offer. Awesome, now a quick word on this material type. So the main reason that you'd be updating this is really two things. One is just for your own reference, so you know what's labor, what's material. Um, MATLAB is a combination of material and labor, so like a composite. Um, so supply and install is a really good one for that. Equipment is obviously higher. Subcontract is anything that's been subbed out. And the other reason is, although it doesn't have a huge impact for Australian and New Zealand users, this does tie into the tax rates. So uh, for some users, mainly in North America, um, there'll be different tax rates tied to different ones of these. But uh, as mentioned, Australia and New Zealand, we're quite fortunate in that our tax is very simple. And uh, yeah, this doesn't uh, change too much tax-wise. Last but not least, I'm gonna save this category and go up to the cog in the top right. As you may already notice, there's a cog on pretty much every screen. Generally speaking, we hide print options and, uh, and uh, different settings in here. I wanna point out specifically this categories and items one, which is a report that's uh, often called the bill of quantities. And it is very good for you to be able to print out a full export of the estimate screen. Uh, generally, we will advise people that this is not for your client because it's gonna show things like your tax, your markup. It's way too transparent for what most people want. Um, and hence, when we get into things like printing the quote, that's much, much more suitable for your client. But this can be really useful for you to have on hand. Great, and that's an intro to the costing screen.